Well, look, uh, let's, let's kick off then. Um, good morning, everybody. Thanks very much for turning up to what is going to be the shortest session of the day, I think. <laughs> but um, nice to see everybody. Um, those of you who don't know me, and I, my name's Jim Heck, and I have the uh, dubious pleasure of being the Honorary Secretary of AMSAT, of which um, more than I'm supposed to do the admin. Um, and I can only think of two things. If there's a fire, out that way down the stairs and out the fire door would be quite good, I should think. And there is a toilet. Certainly there's a gent's toilet. I don't know about a ladies' one, I'm sorry. I didn't use it. But um, down that way and just around the corner. So that's the admin done. Um, there's uh, anyone who's booked in for the dinner this evening down at the, um, the other hotel. Uh, I booked it for sort of half past seven for eight. Um, but I dare say we can meet in the bar um, before then. Um, but uh, that's your timings, and I'll, be, I'll leave out some little place names in, in the barb just before the event. You can pick up, and it shows what you've ordered um, to eat. Uh, don't, yes, don't forget, downstairs there's our little stand in the uh, special interest group room, and uh, uh, they want us to the items of interest, including a Q100 live station. And I do want everybody, and I mean everybody, to pick up uh, a free copy of Oscar News. I bought some back issues, so that if you've never seen it, then uh, by all means take a copy. I, I guess most of the people here present I recognise, so you've probably all got one. Have we got any, anyone who's not a member of AMSAT? Oh, one or two. Okay. Well, do go downstairs and, and pick one up and take it home with you. Um, some of them are quite recent, some of them about two years ago. But... Um, if you don't, they'll be going in the uh, recycling, I'm afraid, because they're taking up a lot of room at home. Um, it did occur to me, I ought to explain about the BATC um, poster, perhaps. This is not the BATC stream, um, but there are quite a lot of BATC people here uh, because they do our streaming for us, and for which we're obviously very grateful. And uh, they've been doing, I think, oh, a number of years, about 10 years or so, I think and our special guest cameraman all the way from uh, the Netherlands, Wouter Wegler, who's been doing that job for about as long as, the uh, same length of time, I think, Wouter, but still, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> um, So the only thing um, I've, I would say is that, for those of you who don't know, I am retiring uh, from the on-sex post, um, sort of next year, middle of next year, and I've got a couple of volunteers so far who are taking on various aspects of the job, which is great, and I'm very grateful to them, but there are other bits and pieces that people could do. So if you f fancy getting involved and taking on uh, some, some role in AMSAT, then um, please make yourself known, as, it, as the saying goes. Uh, let me just check now. Yep, I think that's it. So um, without further ado, on to our chairman's opening remarks. Good morning and welcome to the 35th AMSAT UK Colloquium. I'm sorry I'm only here in 2D, but uh, I hope that you will have a great colloquium seeing everybody in 3D for, uh, for the first time for a long time. Well, in recent years, space has changed a great deal. In fact, small satellites have now become the mainstream space industry, alongside the traditional uh, aerospace manufacturers of large satellites. This really was driven home to me when I attended the uh, Utah uh, SmallSat conference in uh, uh, the US in August. You can see here there were over 3,000 participants and over nearly 250 different companies, uh, it, uh, institutional organizations and government uh, as that were represented uh, in the exhibition. It was a, a very, very active um, Congress and um, I attended the very first one <laughs> and there were 50 people in a small room and it was considered a very, very fringe activity by the uh, space mainstream. Anyway, times have really changed. <laughs> The change in the space industry is perhaps really illustrated by this slide. Just looking at 2021 and looking at a summary of small satellites that were launched in that year, 94% of all the satellites that were launched in 21 were small satellites. 
uh, of, a, of the total launch mass in that year, 43% were small sats. And 37% of all the small sats in the last 10 years were launched in 2021. And in fact, if you include 2020 and 2021, that was nearly 70% of all the small sats in the last 10 years. 80% of all launches in 21 carried small sats. And of the small satellites were launched, only 6% were actually launched on small launches and all the rest were launched on large or mostly medium scale uh, launches. Of those uh, communication satellites that dominated the, the launches in 21, uh, we can see that actually those communication satellites themselves were dominated by two major constellations, Starlink from SpaceX and, and OneWeb. These accounted for nearly 60% of, of all the, uh, the launches. And if we take those out and just have a look at all the other small satellites were launched, we can see there's there was a bit of a, um, a, a growth in 2021, but um, uh, it's been fairly steady over the last five years. Um, but then just in 21, there it, it almost uh, doubled. So we can see that um, uh, you know the the constellations for uh, OneWeb and and uh, Starlink really have uh, dominated the uh, the scene. And the amateur satellite service should take pride in having pioneered small satellites over a number of decades, starting with uh, Oscar One right way back in 1961. Uh, and then, of course, the very successful AMSAT Oscar 7, which is still operational uh, in orbit, uh, leading on to uh, USAT Oscar 9, the first uh, of the modern microsatellites with onboard reprogrammable computers. And then the uh, AMSAT OSCAR-10 and then later 13 uh, communication satellites that were placed into highly elliptical Molniya orbits, which provided long duration communications over a much wider footprint. And then, of course, the explosion, if you like, of uh, small CubeSats uh, for a whole range of different applications and for into the amateur service from many different countries, particularly, of course, from the UK uh, with FunCube-1. And then the very latest in the amateur satellite communications uh, field comes from the Quebec Oscar 100 satellite launched in uh, 2018. So the QO 100 or Qatar Oscar 100 uh, satellite transponder on the SLSAT 2 geostationary satellite provides communications over, I suppose, about a quarter of the Earth's surface uh, in uh, uh, with, with constant communications coverage uh, and uh, is available day or night. And, and you can use uh, actually relatively straightforward equipment, although it's a little more demanding than some of the other satellite uh, equipments uh, because of the uh, the high frequency. Um, but uh, you know, one of the big advantages, of course, is that you don't have to uh, track this satellite and, it, and it's always there. Um, however, we do. I should mention that we have weekly nets on a Sunday morning, uh, which are held both on 80 meters on 3780 kilohertz and on uh, 10 gigahertz on 10489780. Um, we start the 80 meter net at 10 o'clock, and then at 10:30, uh, some of the stations migrate up to uh, 10 gigahertz uh, on to Kuro 100 and continue talking there. So it's sort of rather uh, rather interesting to see that we move from th from three megahertz gigahertz to 10 gigahertz within uh, within half an hour uh, but it's a fantastic uh, uh, transponder and if you don't have equipment you can of course uh, listen to it uh, using the Goon Hilly Web SDR. So just put in Goon Hilly Web SDR into your search engine and that'll pop and then go to 10489780 and, and you can uh, listen into the net. Indeed, uh, some of the most exciting prospects for hopefully 2022 or possibly early 23 will be the first launch from the UK into orbit. Uh, the number of uh, uh, launch sites have been proposed and launch companies developing different rockets and launch capabilities. 
and some of these are uh, direct, you know, direct uh, uh, launch, uh, vertical launches, um, traditional uh, rockets, and others are using rockets which are mounted below aircraft and, and launched uh, from a, an airfield or an airport and then flown out over the sea and, and then launched from there. But um, hopefully we will see the first launch capability from the UK. And this will provide us with opportunities, not only in the commercial field, but of course, hopefully the opportunities to launch some additional amateur uh, radio uh, payloads. It has been a sort of tradition at the colloquium that uh, I give a quick update on some of the interesting activities that SSTL has been in, involved in, in, in during the year. Um, so there are a number of missions uh, covering a wide range of activities that SSTL are currently engaged in. Satellite view, uh, which carries a, a thermal infrared uh, camera, uh, and this is for a commercial constellation, which is going to map heat loss from buildings. Uh, and this is going to obviously feed into the climate change modeling. And another another mission, uh, this time for the European Space Agency called Hydro GNSS. Uh, also feeding into climate models because this will measure um, biomass and soil moisture using uh, reflected signals from the uh, Galileo, GPS, GLONASS, uh, GNSS uh, constellations. Uh, two other missions of interest. Uh, one is uh, a microsar, a microsatellite uh, 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 synthetic aperture radar mission, uh, which is going to be looking at uh, ships at sea. Um, and we have a training mission underway with our colleagues in, in Thailand, which will provide a uh, microsatellite with uh, Earth observation capabilities and also some uh, onboard SDR payloads. Uh, but perhaps one of our most exciting activities at the moment is um, uh, on lunar communications and navigation. So uh, Lunar Pathfinder, which is a mission uh, with ESA, supported by UK Space Agency and uh, also NASA, to demonstrate the uh, establishment of commercial services providing communications and navigation around the moon. So sort of Vodafone and Internet and 5G around the moon, if you like. So uh, these are some uh, really <laughs> exciting uh, activities we're keeping uh, pretty busy and uh, hopefully we'll be able to uh, update you a bit more on, on progress on those at the uh, the next colloquium although definitely not a small satellite um, SSTL made a, a small contribution to the James Webb Space Telescope that was uh, launched earlier this year uh, with the integ integ integral field unit which is part of an instrument uh, called the uh, near spec near infrared spectrograph uh, which was uh, contributed to uh, JPL and then uh, flown on James Webb and uh, it's working perfectly and you can see some of the most amazing pictures that James Webb and this instrument are uh, uh, returning so a little bit of a uh, of a different uh, approach for SSTL and something that we've worked on for many years and it's great to see that in orbit so the recent developments in small satellites and their commercial applications has been referred to as new space, a new approach to, to space, although from the AMSAT has been doing this now for, for several decades. However, new space, of course, itself is not going to uh, stand still. Small satellites have exploited the advances in microelectronics. Uh, but we now see new materials which combining with robotics and uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning are enabling a whole new approach to digital manufacturing uh, with software defined satellites, not just software defined payloads, but we will see satellites which themselves can be increasingly defined by onboard software to uh, adapt to different applications and service requirements. <clears throat> and of course, all of this means that, and particularly demonstrated in new space, very rapid technological development cycles where new ideas uh, emerge, they are uh, built into small satellites, launched quickly, and the results analyzed, and then you get the next generation of improved satellites to which refine that. And so we will see you know, reconfigurable satellites and, and, and services, and we will see increased in orbit space robotics and autonomous systems. Now, uh, some of that has already been now being demonstrated through active space debris removal. If, if you haven't seen the removed space uh, um, debris, <laughs> 
If you haven't seen the removed debris, I should say, satellite uh, video on YouTube, go away and, uh, and look it up and you'll see that. It's uh, quite fun to watch. Uh, but that uh, initial demonstration is now being exploited uh, from commercial applications uh, with a number of companies that are going to provide commercial uh, debris cleaning services uh, in orbit. We've seen in orbit uh, refueling uh, being done and soon we will see in orbit spacecraft assembly and eventually in orbit uh, satellite manufacture so uh, you know, the, uh, the the world won't stay still and new space will move on uh, to what I, I've sort of coined as uh, next space when we see space and satellites moving from being constructed on the ground to being constructed in orbit and eventually of course leading uh, to robotic uh, support for human habitation prolonged human habitation on the lunar surface and eventually mars and finally uh, i would like to add my congratulations to eric eichmann dk1 tb uh, who this year has been awarded the g3 aaj trophy and this particularly recognizes his contribution to, to AMSAT through his work on SAT PC32, which I know many of you may indeed be using. So congratulations, uh, Eric, and indeed thanks to from everybody in the AMSAT community for the work and effort that you've done uh, on SAT PC32. So now it only remains for me, first of all, to thank the AMSAT UK committee for all their hard work during the, the year and particularly in the production of Oscar News and also to uh, BATC uh, for supporting the colloquium with uh, web streaming. So I hope you will have an interesting and enjoyable stimulating colloquium and uh, I look forward to hopefully seeing you in person in 3D next year. Thanks very much, Martin, if you're watching. Um, uh, and I'm not certain if Eric's watching. I did uh, e email him um, uh, a few days ago saying that he was he, informing him he'd, he'd been uh, awarded the cup this year. I haven't had a reply, so he may be watching. Uh, I thought I'd bring in its special carrier um, the, the AHA Cup, which is not looking too battered, um, but it's already got his name engraved on it. And uh, this is a thing that was um, presented to AMSAT by the late uh, Ron Brawlbrent, G3AAJ. And it's been going, I think, about 20, over 25 years, I think. And if you look on the website, there's a little write-up about it and the previous people who've, um, who've won it. So keep your fingers off it, please, because I actually polished it yesterday. So it doesn't get a polish very often. Um, so I think that concludes... Um, uh, this little mini session. Thank you very much all for attending. Uh, any other announcements? I'm looking at other members of the committee. I don't think there's anything to do with it particularly. So we're going to reconvene um, at 11, 10.45. Is that right? Yes, this is supposed to go on until quarter past 10, but I don't think it's <coughs> worth spinning out. So we're going to have an extended coffee break until 10.45 when uh, Peter Gertzow from AMSAT DL will be giving us his normal Rocky Road update. Hope you're not looking, Peter. <laughs> okay, thank you very much indeed, and see you later. <laughs>